Right, so here I am with Paul Mark Davis, a, a man of many monsters. You, um... So, uh, so many monsters. So you, many bad guys. And you've, you've done Doctor Who, Torchwood, Sarah Jane Adventures, and Class. Are you the only person that has done all the spin-offs and the main show? Yeah, yeah, because Paul, Paul Casey was right on my heels up until I did Class. Um, cause I think he had done all three. I was on the big finish as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I've got the full, full set. <laughs> Quite an honor. <laughs> was it always your ambition to, to do all the shows? No, no, not at all. Um, I, I, I it, it hadn't dawned on me at all. Um, but then after doing Doctor Who and, and, and having, you know, just sort of so much fun there, um, when I got asked to do the Sarah Jane Adventures, um, I had that right. I'm in the system feeling, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, of course, I, I I hoped I would be considered for for other things as well. I feel like you need some sort of certificate or badge given to you by B the BBC. Yeah, that would be nice. Maybe some, maybe a ribbon that I can sew onto my swimming swimming trunks. That would be <laughs> perfect. You have a Peter badge. <laughs> so how did that first gig on Doctor Who come about? Uh, well, you know, put, put forwards by my agent and, um, uh, and, then, and then got the, got the audition and found myself in the audition um, and um, I was allowed to just interpret a Catholic character however I wanted to do it. Um, the, the chieftain of the future kind. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I just sort of did this spidery, slightly insect-like, slightly mad character and, uh, the director whose name has completely slipped my mind momentarily. Ah, uh, they're all going to know it out there and they're all going to think, ah, how can he not know this? Um, he was jumping around. He was very excited about the character I created and that was that. And then, and then off, off I went to do it. So you've been at the read through and you've um, obviously rehearsed the scenes. It must have made quite a difference then having the, the teeth added. Uh, yeah, especially as the teeth genuinely were like hard razor sharp <laughs> teeth. Um, and I was, I was bleeding from so many places. Um, I mean, it took me, it took me a couple of days to stop biting into myself. Um, and, and was sort of really having to take them out in between takes because they were, they, they were just vicious. You're just going to do as you normally do, like you lick your lips or you, you know, and before you know it, you know, cause the teeth fit over your teeth. So they're, they're much longer than your teeth. So at the point where you wouldn't normally be biting, with the teeth in, you're already bitten right the way through something. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they made quite a mess of my face for, um, for a couple of days, but got used to it. <laughs> you certainly don't want to be biting your tongue with those gnashes in. No, no, no. But, but then, out of all of the things that we were doing that day, there was so much, there were so many things that were causing pain. Uh, those teeth were kind of the, the, the least of my troubles. Um, you know, I mean, we were, we were uh, running in a quarry in that, you know, that quarry in Wales. Uh, when was it? I mean, it was uh, November time. I mean, it was unbelievably cold in that quarry. Um, and we were doing very sort of physical things. I remember one of the scenes, we were sort of like, we were running, uh, and then we suddenly sort of like slide to a stop. And it was that slide to a stop when your muscles are frozen. And I pulled a muscle so badly in my thigh, I could barely walk. And in fact, extras were being carried off left, right and centre uh, with similar kind of muscle strain injuries. I couldn't walk, but of course had to carry on. Um, and so at one point got carried off uh, by the medic who was there, who had this kind of uh, magic spray that he sprayed on my leg that was just kind of like, you know, for when you've got to carry on kind of spray. But it was kind of hard to get to with all the leather and everything that was going on there. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was, um, I was in agony. <laughs> <laughs> lips bleeding legs muscles messed up well clearly i've got it completely wrong because i would have imagined the future future kind was probably the the simplest transformation of the characters you play but but clearly not um yeah it was it was yeah there were there were just like some strange um sort of uh, uh 
uh, unforeseen difficulties that came about. But no, all in all, I mean, it was just um, it was just so much fun, and I loved it down in that quarry. Um, I was, uh, uh, you know, I had a trailer next to Renny Zaga, um, who's just such a such a great guy, and we we got on like a house on fire, and 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 that's what I remember about the shoot more 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 than anything else is just being him sat in this trailer in a quarry, just just putting the worlds to rights. It was great fun. Did you get much time to get to know the leads on the show? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, obviously there's a lot of, lot of hanging around down there and, and we did get to chat quite a bit. Um, I was, uh, if I remember correctly, I was, cause I was fascinated with the, the, the stone. I, years ago, before I was an actor, I was a sculptor. Um, and uh, so I was fascinated with the stone that, 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 were, that they were uh, mining in the quarry there. And then it turned out um, that uh, <laughs> Captain Jack had sort of grown up in that, uh, that whole environment. He's, if I remember this correctly, that his family owned mining company or something. We were talking about rock and yeah, that was interesting in between singing show tunes. Um, and uh, yeah, David Tennant was, well, he's just so upbeat as well. He's always so upbeat. And you know, that, that's really just your, your, your job when, 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 you, when you find yourself, um, you know, in a, in a quarry in November in Wales with, with, with very little to do. You know, the, the acting part of it is gonna make up about 5% of the time that you stand down there. The other 95% of the time, your job is just to help everyone to stay sane and upbeat and, and, and full of energy. So when it comes to it, you know, it's not just four o'clock in the morning, freezing cold. Oh, get me out. You know, it's not that. You're you're just you're you're ready to go. You know, um, and so yeah, yeah. We we sung a lot of show tunes down there. <laughs> you experienced the the proper old school Doctor Who experience of, of being in a quarry in the cold at night. Yeah. It's like we're back in the seventies and eighties all over again. Is it is it more CGI these days then? <laughs> I think a lot of time, yeah. <laughs> Um, another member of the cast, of course, you had a, a Knight of the Realm with you. You had Sir Derek Jacobi. Oh, yes. Yeah. And in fact, I was, I was um, so excited about, about, you know, him, him, I, think was, I just adore him. And um, yeah, I was very, very excited about, about meeting him and, and I just didn't really get to meet. I got to literally just just cross paths with him. I mean, we didn't have any sort of scenes together, of course. Um, so um, we, you know, we kind of met queuing up for food on a couple of occasions, <laughs> and uh, um, and and that was just about it. But um, uh, but then we did meet at a, a, a convention. I think it was about a couple of years after that, and uh, and we had a little bit more of a chat. I mean, what a what a warm man he is just there's just he just has this uh i don't know aura about him he really does now of course in the sarah jane adventures you had a reoccurring character um how has that been able to return to the role and, and build on it um <laughs> yeah i mean it was <laughs> that that character i was you know i was um <laughs> so the main thing with that character is this sort of domino effect due to part of the costume. So, okay, you can't breathe through your nose. My nose was covered. Couldn't breathe through my nose at all. So uh, you had to breathe through your mouth all the time. And if you breathe through your mouth all the time, you need to drink lots of water, okay? <laughs> also, I'm doing this voice like this. If you're doing a voice like that, you need to drink lots of water as well or else you'll wreck your throat. So I am drinking gallons of water and I'm in a costume where I've got platforms like that. I'm almost seven foot tall. I can't see where I'm going. And so, and, I ha and because of the gallons of water that I've drunk, I'm having to go to the toilet like <laughs> all the time. And every time I go, I need to, you know, find someone to take me because I can't walk or see. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was that was kind of an issue. Uh, needing the bathroom. <laughs> um, uh, also, it's a lonely existence. It is a lonely existence when you look so terrifying and people can't. Um, you know, a lot of people on set 
found it hard to adjust to, to you know, to, um, well, you know, people would sort of come up to me like I was, like I was a scary doll and just sort of like poke me and prod me and then sort of like t turn to the, the, the you know, the, the makeup staff and say, oh, how long does it take to put all of that on? And I'm like, you can ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sat in the, you know, so it was funny. People were, and people were genuinely terrified. There was obviously, obviously a lot of children on set as well. They were all terrified. Um, but yeah, it was nice to, it was nice to develop it. But I, the, I just wanted to make him more and more horrible, more and more revolting. Um, but I liked the way that the, the character did develop. I mean, by, by the, um, the third time I, I played him, when I was playing alongside David Tennant again in the, in the wedding, uh, the wedding scenes, you got more of a sense of of his character. He wasn't just this sort of like pure ball of darkness. That there was some uh, vulnerability and and personal meanness there as well. And but also admiration for the doctor. And um, you know, um, I, I I I I loved him. I loved him. It's interesting. You, you mentioned several times how terrifying the trickster appeared. Were you surprised they managed to get away with him being as scary as he was, considering Sarah Jane was a children's program? It was on yeah. the tea time. Well, well, yeah, and and you know, when when I was playing the character, certainly by by the second series, I was just thinking, you know, he's this this a big old dude hanging around with children a lot. I mean, he's really quite obsessed with children, it seems, you know, and so that was, <laughs> you can't, you can't escape, you know, why does he want to hurt children so badly? Um, so, um, yeah, <laughs> it was a revolting character. Um, um, yeah, I, you know, it was funny when we had the, um, uh, I think year or year before last, there was the, uh, the, um, big convention for reunion for, for Sarah Jane and uh, God, I, did, I enjoyed that so much um, it was really funny you know because when you're in your 30s now in my 40s 10 years goes by like that and you don't think about it and it'd been you know it'd been 10 years since I've I'd, I'd done it since I've done it pretty much and um, you know Adults were coming up to me, these were adults in their 20s who were telling me, you know, that I'd absolutely terrified them, that I was, you know, that I was uh, in their nightmares throughout their entire childhood. And it was just so, it was so strange to it because these were adults, these were people in their 20s. So I was just thinking, God, is, it, is that much time really passed, you know? Uh, and it has, yeah, it's been, been a long time. So your, your final experience in the, the Doctor Who universe was in class, again as another yeah. re reoccurring character. Um, how was it working on a show with, with such a, a young cast? I mean, they, they, were, they were all just so lovely and so, uh, just so professional. You know, they really, really, they were just completely on top of it all. Um, but also, uh, as I'd always found, whenever um, I'd worked on any of, of those series, um, they seem to be very, very good at picking uh, <laughs> actors who who are a lot of fun, you know. And and on on during long shoots, long difficult shoots, um, you know, uh, keep everyone's spirits up. So it had been uh, a lot of fun. And again, it was. I mean, it was a it was a difficult role. It was a, a really difficult role for me. I mean, I I. Uh, I, I've never fainted in my life. And I fainted three times during the filming uh, of class. I had to be carried out of the studio once, um, unconscious. Um, and um, it was so hot in that suit. And you're so, I was so surrounded. I mean, literally is an, an inch of rubber around everything. And um, once the heat goes up inside you, it's, it's, there's nowhere for it to go. Um, we were filming in the middle of summer. There was some, you know, we were filming in a house at one point where and it was it was 80 degrees outside. Um, and uh, I, I was really, really struggling, really struggling with the suit. We had, um, we had a stunt man uh, who came in for, for one day, um, who was, you know, my stunt double. 
he was only there for the one day. And at the end of the day, he was just like, I don't know how you're doing this every day. And that, I mean, this is a guy who has dedicated his life to being in dangerous, horrible situations. And he was, he was done after a day in that suit. It was, um, th there was some terrifying moments. Had heat stroke, um, had, uh, well, I, I, I had two days off anyway, but though, on those two days, I was lying in my pants on my hospital bed with the air conditioning turned up full. I thought I was going to die. You know, I mean, it was, it was, it was a tough one. It was a really tough shoot. On the, on the plus side though, did you lose any weight? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could do with that suit after lockdown actually. <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my weight very rarely fluctuates. I'm still wearing the same jeans I was wearing when I was 18. Oh, I hate um, you. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, have, I do. I have quite a, a, a strict diet, I would say. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, when, you know, when I, when, when I first hit 40, you know, there was a moment where, because I, I don't really have mirrors in my house, really. I mean, I've got one in, one in the bathroom so I can, you know, so I don't miss my mouth when I'm trying to brush my teeth. But that's, that's pretty much it. And I did catch myself in the mirror around about 40 and was just like, hang on, who, who is that? <laughs> who is that? And um, so, yeah, so, so got a little bit stricter around, around 40. <laughs> well, there's, there's the one show um, we haven't talked about was your somewhat briefer appearance on Torchwood um, <laughs> as the that coward pretty... leader. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was, <laughs> there's not really much to talk about there. Um, you yeah, know, we were filming in this, um, uh, it was like a server room and the noise was unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, you've literally got like uh, thousands and thousands of rack servers. Each one's got their fan. And there's huge cooling for the whole building. And I was stood 30 feet away from the camera and no matter how loud they shouted, I could not hear them saying action, couldn't hear them saying cut. So um, <clears throat> we, we just, everyone was just coping as best that they could, but they ended up just, I think they even sort of dubbed a different voice on me. I, I don't really consider that <laughs> me. <laughs> it, was, it was it was me in the suit, but that was about it. There was, there was quite a bit more script that was, where I, I attempted to just shout out, but I ended up just, <laughs> Happening a lot, I think. <laughs> well, I think the obvious question to um, ask you finally is of the four characters you've played in the Doctor Who universe, which one is your favourite? I'm, I'm presuming it's not the torture character. <laughs> not the torture character, de de definitely not Korokinus. Um, uh, it's difficult because it's difficult to kind of like separate the job that you're doing with the whole, with everything else that's kind of going on there, you know. Um, but, um, you know, for me, doing, you know, playing the Chieftain was it was, a, it was, it was a real new experience for me. You know, it was the first sort of uh, BBC work that I had done. Um, you know, up until that point, most of my work had been uh, independent films. Um, and, 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 well, okay, Harry Potter wasn't a small independent <laughs> film, but this was, this was the, 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 the it, it felt like the first sort of like British TV Right, I was just incredibly excited about it. I'm really kind of humbled by it all. Um, and, um, you know, I, 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 I'll always remember, you know, arriving in uh, at the Novotel, um, you know, the day before I was uh, due to start shooting. And, uh, you know, this has never happened to me. We're moving, to, going to a hotel and get my room and, and, and the woman behind the counter says, oh, we have some mail for you, Mr. Davis. <laughs> for me? Um, and of course it was the, the script and um, so I kind of got the script and got a beer and went to the jacuzzi, <laughs> sat in the jacuzzi reading the script and was just had that real feeling of, yeah, I've arrived. <laughs> just felt great. Now, I said that was the last question, but I can't allow someone to mention Harry Potter and then not ask them about it. Um, what, okay. was it like, what was it like working on that sort of huge franchise? mental for so many reasons there are so many things i could tell you about it that would that okay here, here's something that not a lot of people know about my experience at, at at harry potter so i was uh due to be playing the the ghost 
of the Cavalier. And uh, that was all pending. That was going to be starting in uh, April. Um, I had just got back from traveling around India. It was, of, uh, it was in uh, January of that year, or fe no, beginning of February of that year. And, uh, and I, I just had a party um, because I'd just arrived uh, at home uh, from, from a month, month traveling. And a uh, big party. Woke, got woken up by my phone at about 6.30 in the morning and it was my agent saying, they need you on the set of Harry Potter now. And I was like, I am not filming for another two months yet. They were like, no, 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 no. There is a teacher, one of the, one of the teachers on the head table that has just dropped out because of food poisoning and someone has noticed that you look exactly like him um, and you're going to have a, a big black beard on anyway but they need you now. And I was just like, I, I was flat out in bed and I was like, I'm, I'm, I, I can't do it. I just, I can't do it. Okay, not a problem. Call back 10 minutes later. Okay, they're offering you this much money. And it was quite, it was a lot, but I was still, no. And then they called back 10 minutes after that and it was like, you can't refuse this amount of money. So I was like, okay, jumped in my car, drove to Leeson Studios. On the way there, I get a call from one of my closest friends. Um, who was working as essentially third assistant director on Harry Potter. He was basically looking after all the kids, making sure they were all in the, the, the right place. And he called up and said, Paul, are you on your way to Leaveston Studios? And I said, yeah. He said, Paul, the entire production is stopped and is waiting for you. He said, all I've heard all this morning is Paul Mark Davis, Paul Mark Davis, Paul Mark Davis. He said, that's all I'm hearing over the radio. They've been trying to get hold of you. So I, anyway, I arrived there. They throw me in the costume. They get me through makeup. They slap a beard on me. They push me into this, you know, I'm seeing this huge scaffolding and boards and, you know, for the, the Great Hall. And I walk through the Great Hall. Of course, everybody is in there at that point. Um, all of the, the kids are like turning around because they all know that they're waiting for someone. Maybe they think they're waiting for someone important. I felt very important at that moment. And I walked all the way down. And of course, as I get to the top table, I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Oh my God. Maggie Smith. Oh my God. Oh, you know, all of seeing all of these sort of, Alan Rickman. Oh my God. And then sort of Maggie Smith, who obviously just recognized me as the guy who had been sat there all the time, just sort of looked at her watch and went, <laughs> that was it. I was like, morning. So that was my first day on Harry Potter. So actually during the sorting hat scene, there's a guy with a, one of the teachers with the big black, that's me as well. I'm in two, I'm two characters in that one scene. There you go. New fact and, for you. And you dared keep Dame Maggie Smith waiting. Yeah, I, I did. I did. <laughs> well, well, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting oh, to you. Oh, my pleasure too. Uh, thank you so much. And, uh, and take care. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.